Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenidos al Departamento de Español de Godalming College. I'd like to give you a little overview of what to expect if you come and do Spanish A-level at the college. First of all, let me introduce you to the department. I'm Jenny. I'm the course leader for Spanish and I'm from Argentina. My colleagues Jenny from Venezuela and Astrid from Colombia also teach part of the course. They're also the foreign language assistant, which means that they have small groups of threes and fours that you would go to once a week to practice your spoken Spanish in a less threatening environment. So, what about the course? The fascinating thing about studying Spanish A-level is that it's a whole bunch of subjects all rolled into one. So you've got uh, things like um, the traditional values as opposed to the modern values in Spain nowadays and perhaps in some of the, the Latin American countries. So we're looking at how those values are changing, how the influence of the Catholic Church marks those values. We also look at um, the, the internet and how cyberspace has changed economies and individuals and how we deal with social media uh, and that kind of thing. What about human rights? We look at the rights of women, the rights of LGBT groups and any other smaller groups. Uh, then we look at idols, the influence of idols on young people and the society. So we've got footballing idols like Messi, my idol, and we've got pop idols like Shakira and J-Lo. Uh, and we've got film stars like Salma Hayek, all from Spanish-speaking countries. Um, we've also got um, uh, the, the architectural heritage um, in Spain with the Arab architecture uh, and in Machu Picchu here in the picture, uh, the Inca ruins in Peru, photobombed by a llama. Then we've also got the fiestas. So what's the cultural heritage in terms of the fiestas in Spain? The wacky tomatina, the biggest food fight in the world and, and so many other um, fiestas that we can look into in closer detail. Then we've also got um, the heritage in terms of uh, artistic heritage. So we've got Frida Kahlo, um, a, pa a Mexican painter um, who, by the way, was one of the early feminists in the 1930s in Mexico. She was ahead of her time in terms of speaking out for the rights of women. So um, that's about all for the topics in the first year. What else do we do in year one? We've got a film to study, so we do Volver by Pedro Almodovar, and we have also got a play. Uh, we, at the moment we're doing La Casa de Bernarda Alba by Federico García Lorca, who is one of the, um, the biggest literary figures in Spain. Apart from the film and the literature, we also have to prepare an independent research project project for the speaking exam at the end of the two years. That's a really interesting thing to do because that is absolutely your choice. So you choose the subject that you want to research so long as it's in a Spanish speaking country and that is the main part of your speaking exam at the end of two years. So we do that in year one as well. We go into year two and we've got six more units to cover and we go into more um, the, the, the formation of the society, the multi multiculturalism that there is in Spain with the arrival of immigrants from Africa particularly because it's just across the water. And then we've got um, politics to look at. Are the young people interested in politics in Spain? More so after the 2008 economic crash because it affected them so badly. So we've got more and more young people getting involved in politics. Uh, and so what are the things that they protest about? What are the things that really interest them? Um, then, of course, we, we go into uh, dictatorships. There's quite a few dictators that um, are happening or have happened in the past in Spain and in South America. So we've got Franco, uh, who's had a huge impact on Spain uh, because it was a very long dictatorship and it was a, a very strong 
um, handed one as well. And then in Latin America, of course, we've got a, quite a few dictatorships to choose from. The good thing about the subject is that you don't have to stick by prescribed um, particular um, events or personalities. You can choose the ones that interest you most. So if, for instance, in dictatorship, you you much prefer to to look further into uh, Cuba or Argentina or Chile, Pinochet, um, you can do that. You choose um, the personality that you want to, to look into and study. And, and that's um, the, the good thing about Spanish is that it's not prescriptive. You choose what areas of the units you want to look into in more detail. What else? Um, we've got the build up to the assessment. So what does the A-level assessment entail? We've got three papers all sat at the end of the second year. Paper one is the reading and the listening comprehension with uh, translations, both into Spanish and into English. Then in paper two, we've got the literature and the film assessed. So you would write one essay on Volver and another essay on La Casa de Bernarda Alba. And paper three is the speaking exam, the bulk of which is the uh, your research project. And the other part is um, they want to hear you talk a little bit about one of the units that we've been looking at. And there you would pick the areas that you've looked into personally. So they won't ask you specific things. They will ask you, well, which dictator did you choose, for instance? So what about results? In Godalming College, we have had very good results. So just to show you the results of June 2019, we had 41% A star to A grades, which was well above similar centres and all English centres in general. If you look at A star to B grades, we had 78%, again, well ahead of other centres. And finally, A star to C grades was 94%. So really good, a really good set of grades. So you can be confident that we are an experienced group of teachers and that we can offer you every opportunity to um, do your best and get the, the highest grade possible that you can get. What else happens? How do we get there? We get there with practice. So you've got benchmarks. The benchmarks are just a series of smaller exams to build up your skills um, to get you ready for that final exam at the end of the two years. So in the benchmarks, every two units that we do, we will give you a, a translation, a summary, um, a, and a listening comprehension, a reading comprehension, just so that you can build up your skills in in preparation for your exam, because it's a lot of, of practice, really. If you practice um, the, the exam techniques, as well as just the skills themselves, then you will be fully prepared for the exams. What else do we do? Um, we encourage you to uh, listen to programs in Spanish regularly at home. Um, you are learning a language, so it's, you're not just going to learn it in the classroom and with homework. You need to also just expose yourself to the language um, through watching uh, Netflix, maybe programs in Spanish on Netflix or dubbed programs. Um, so if you, um, some of my students were watching Friends dubbed in Spanish, or El Ministerio del Tiempo is a really good series that you could watch, Narcos, others watch Narcos. Um, so there's, a, there's so much to choose from that you pick uh, the, 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 the programs that you're interested in and you listen to Spanish in that way. Obviously do some reading, do some grammar and translation practice, and very important to speak. So if you can find someone, perhaps in the course, that you can just get together with and determine to speak in Spanish for 10 minutes in the cafeteria every day. That would be fantastic and it would help you just get you um, practicing those speaking skills that are so important. So what else do we do? We offer a trip. Uh, the trip we offer is to Córdoba and we do work experience there. So we do that in the second year, once you feel a little bit more confident with your language skills and then there's a placement um, that you, you get given and you uh, practice your Spanish skills in that placement. Uh, it's a fascinating city to um, 
to um, visit as well because you've got the um, Arab architecture, you've got Roman architecture, you've got the Jewish quarter because uh, it's it's a really fascinating um, city in terms of the, um, the, the three different cultures co-living alongside each other in a peaceful way. So that's really, um, really positive. Um, what about progression? If you do A-level Spanish, it's a very well-regarded A-level uh, by the universities. So it's a very strong A-level to have. Um, and you could either do it on its own or you could combine it with other subjects. So other popular subjects to combine it with would be business or leisure and tourism. Um, and um, you can do it uh, as joint honours um, and that um, is, is a really good thing to do. Otherwise, if you're not planning to, to take it further and go to university, it's a skill for life. I hope you enjoyed uh, that little overview and that we see you soon.